from childhood as well. Well, I wouldn't. I would call it teenagedom. <laughs> child. It's, I was a child. Um, the Lion King. I'm throwing in an animated one because it has it. All all of them are musicals. All most of those Disney movies. I would say ninety percent of them. But this one actually got made into a Broadway musical. That's that is um, really awesome. But the movie itself, I loved. Um, it came out in like ninety four ish, I think. And before it came Aladdin, which had Robin Williams as the genie, but he was like the one stunt big name that they threw in there. And then came, I feel like Lion King after, and it was the first time that Disney had done this moment where they cast all these superstars in it. And I feel like it, it just set the trend for now all the movies that come out have to have recognizable voices. That's what's selling the thing. Um, so it had, obviously it had Jonathan Taylor Thomas, who was at the height of popularity, who then grew into being Matthew Broderick as Simba, the main lion. Jeremy Irons was the villain. Um, of course, Nathan Lane, and th this is CNN, <laughs> or Darth Vader. Oh, um, Darth Vader. J James Earl Jones, Whoopi Goldberg. Anyways, I also loved this movie, first off, for the awesome songs, uh, Hakun Hakuna Matata, and uh, of course, um, I just can't I just can't wait to be, yeah, the, the, the peppy childhood ones are my favorite. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also, like, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, and, and of course, I wish I had the cat over here. That's what we did to Travis when he was born. The doctors were like, put him down. And I was like, I've been waiting. <laughs> they were like, he's still attached to you. Calm down. <laughs> Thankfully. Don't worry, I he was a C section, just in case that does anything better for anybody. <laughs> okay. Anyways, back to the movie. Um, I also, other than the musical numbers, enjoyed it because I feel like this movie finally provided a breath of fresh air in the cycle of Disney movies that were all about damsels in distress being rescued by singing good looking animated princes. It was annoying as crap. Yeah. And this one finally broke and was about parental issues and abandonment and whatever, you know, and co coming out of the ashes and whatever. But I just liked that it was finally not a movie about a Disney princess that needed rescued. Which is probably why Frozen took the exact same exact. True. That's very true. So I, I think it'll be, you know, it'll obviously be interesting because this one would require a lot of costuming to pull off. But can you imagine, actually, if they took just the animal aspect out of this and just humanize the story in some way. Cause you can see how it would be like, Oh my God, I thought I was responsible for my father's death. So I've run off never to be heard from again. Somebody finds me. I come back to my town, that kind of thing. You can see a human. You could, element. Yeah. It's not as fun, but um, I would love to see how they could pull it off and put it on a live. Oh, you know, show. If, if it's not as fun, let's leave it to NBC to do that one. Green oh. light. <laughs> 